I feel like I'm gonna get ripped right now by your audience because of what I'm about to show them. No, you you're sure? not gonna get. Ripped. I know the audience. You're not gonna. Get, you might get. I a know little, those guys. You might get a little ripped. Ah, all right, but. let's go. Greg Yuna. Here we are in your new space. Mm -hmm. You guys are the first people in here. I'm excited, we're opening up next week. Honored. 250 <laughs> Mulberry, opposite ALD. The whole squad is yeah. here. Yeah, that's yeah. exciting. The crew. The crew. The New York City crew. Queens crew. The Queens crew. So tell me a little bit about how you even got into jewelry. I found the love for jewelry, you know, by the way it made me feel as you put it on. It's like, you know, the, you know, when you go buy a brand new outfit in, in, you know, in a store or whatever, and you, you feel good, you look good, you perform good. So for me, it was always a performance thing. Yeah, I get that. It's like a armor in a way. Yeah. You know? It's exactly armor. Yes. In a way. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, so you started off doing jewelry. I started off in sales. Sales. Doing some jewelry, yeah. you know, slowly getting into that, mostly watches. Okay. And, um, I, you know, it was very overwhelming for me in that industry. I don't know if you guys are familiar with 47th Street. I know you are a little bit. But um, it's, it's... It's wild. It's anxiety-driven, that place. <laughs> it's, it's wild. But just being on that street is just overwhelming. So just with all the watches being new to the industry, it's, you know, from Rolex to AP to Vacherons and yeah. to everything. It's just how do you even start to understand right. all these different pieces? It's a lot. It's a lot. lot. Yeah. Um, just for context, I heard that you actually started out on the same booth as Jacob. I did. I yeah. did. I started in the same booth as Jacob. It was probably one of the iconic places you can be. Yeah. Jacob was such a... A force. M a mogul in our, you know, in our industry. Mm, for you know? sure. The Kaplan building. The Kaplan building. Yeah. Rest in peace yeah. to the Kaplans. A lot of celebrities going lot, through there. It was, it was a big moment when he was there. I got guys now that are probably 15, 16, you know, on their way to come get me, you know? Cause I remember when I got in the industry, I'm like, I'm going to get Jacob. That was, it was Jacob and Ben Bowler. Yeah. And I was like, you know, you know, yeah. until, you know, you finally get recognized by them and then you realize how much they don't, you guys don't really like each other. He went from being your idol to- An enemy? A, a rival, I mean. A rival. I don't look at him as an enemy. He's done wonderful things for the industry, but um, yeah. I just, I don't respect him as much. Okay. <laughs> but not, not an enemy. All good. We like that inside the industry, you know, tea. Right. Okay. So you're doing the jewelry thing. You go off on your own in 2017. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. I got in the industry. I was mostly known for ruining watches. This is one of my favorite pieces here. Hang on a sec. You just said ruining. Watches. Yeah, I ruined this. Okay. <laughs> okay. Self-professed. You ruined. Yeah, ruined you ruined world. it. The fifty-seven twenty-six. So listen to to your audience is ruined. Yeah, to okay. mine. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. <laughs> to me, it's beautiful. This is a fifty-seven twenty-six. Yeah. And this is one of my favorite pet sex. Okay. And it's a flower setting, yes, goods. And it, the way it's set is just beautiful. It's art. If you know anything about setting, which a lot of people don't. Right. It's like setting tiles in a house. Um, <laughs> I think it's underappreciated, right? Like the art of kind of gem setting. People don't know that it, much about it. It is, but a lot of people don't realize it's, it's an art. It's truly an art. You know, some people enjoy things like this. You know, it's not my everyday piece, but I do. Got I'm it. in Las Vegas. I want to have a good time. I want to be seen, you know, just went through a breakup or, you know, you just won a battle in law or whatever, you know. Yeah. <laughs> a battle in a law. A battle in law. <laughs> I don't want to know about that. Oh, this one is so good. I have to put this one on. Okay. You know, from one diamond watch to the next. It's just, you know, it's just the setting on this is, is, is beautiful. This is my good friend, Avi and Co. Yeah. Um, this is the 40 millimeter rose gold frost. And it just looks like, like something the Avenger would have. It looks I almost, mean, almost looks fake. It is wild. It's beautiful. Look at the setting in here. Yeah, it's all like, baguette. This is creme de la creme of settings. Why is it creme de la creme? Because it's just, it's invisible. It's every stone is cut to perfection here. I've never seen anything like that. Yeah, neither of us. It's the ugliest and prettiest thing at the same time. But that's like the sweet spot. Right? Yeah, yeah. ugly, beautiful. The ugly, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Okay, tell me a little bit about Avi and Co. He's been one of my closest friends in this industry, mm -hmm. you know. I've been through my ups and downs in this, and you know, it's, it's very cutthroat. 
Right. And he's been one of the people that has been in the industry and remains solid with me. Anything I ever needed, it was just he was just solid. And um, I appreciate him. And, you know, it's just, I think what he's doing in the watch industry is he's kicking down the door. And you guys met? We met early on in the industry. I was one of, you know, I met him probably the first year I was there. Mm -hmm. And he's just been just the same solid human. It's, that's all I can ever ask from someone is just to be consistent. Do your clients come in and, and ask you what to do to their watches? Like, it's a collaboration, right? You, usually it's a collaboration, but you know, some people are always like, hey, I want this, I want it to look just like that. And we make that happen. Yeah, and you have a creative partner. Yes. What is, she's probably the boss. She's the, yeah. ge she's the genius, you know? <laughs> she does, she does, she's just the brain, she gets it. She'll come, you know, go home one night and like make a cute little collection of something. Let's call it like the alphabets. We're working on the alphabet, mm. the baby alphabet production. Yeah. And then I'll come and throw my little two cents in and it becomes this beautiful joint collaborative masterpiece. Nice. We gotta give props to Rachel. Rachel gets all Ra the props. Rachel. From Ugly Beautiful to slightly more palatable <laughs> uh, GMT, mm -hmm. lefty. You know, I put this on wrong all the time because I'm so used to the... Uh, Why did you go for the Destro? I want to say because I wanted to be different, but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you just like it. It's just good. Yeah. It's just really good. Okay. Where are you wearing this? Vacation. Here. Every day. It's a good beater. It's a beater. It's a beater. It's a vacation watch. It's a, but it's a sexy beater. It's a respectable beater. It's not like a <laughs> Seiko. Oh, oh. Sorry. Or a Movado. It's a, it's a proper beater. No, it is not a this Seiko. This is a respectable, this is a respectable timepiece. No doubt. Uh, what makes it respectable? It's one of those things. It's a pretty, like, it's a pretty piece. And it's like, you know, I've seen billionaires in this thing. And I'm like, okay, you yeah. know what? Yeah. I can do that. What about your personal approach to watches and sort of how you collect? What are you thinking about when you're making a personal purchase? Heritage. Okay. For instance, that turquoise and the malachite are probably my two favorite watches that I own. I just like that, you know, in the 80s, they had this turquoise situation going on and they just brought it back, I think in 2020. Yeah. Factory dial. It's just, it's just, a, it's a classic. It's you don't see it every day. They're expensive. Yeah. Can't get your hands on it. <laughs> you know. So when you see that face, you're like, oh, this is this. What is that? What is this? It? Is nice. What are you? You're attracted to stone dials, presumably. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'm gonna have to take this off. But this is we're, we're saying goodbye to this one. Okay. I'm gonna show you my personal. Okay. Favorite. I'm not my sure name. if I'm done with this one. No, we'll get but, back to okay. it. Okay. <laughs> let this one marinate here for a little bit. Okay. But this. This is the Malachi 36 millimeter. Biggie Smalls wore this kind of watch, 36 millimeter. You know yeah. how big Biggie was? He was a big man. You know? Yeah. Right now they have the 44 millimeters that are crazy. It's too big. It's like, let's dial it down a little bit. No pun intended. <laughs> huh? I think he wore a blue dial. I don't didn't remember, it? but he did have it, but it looked so good on him with like a meaty hand and, yeah. you know? But anyway, the Malachi, my personal, my favorite favorite. Okay. This is my one. Number this, one. This I is number one. Number one. Number one. In, number one. In the ranking. Just makes me feel good. The green, it's it's rich. Yeah. Okay. It looks good. It looks good. A yeah. green dial is just sexy. And it's a stone. Even if we don't have it here today, what what was your like first serious watch purchase? In two thousand one, mm -hmm. I had a my mom's cousin worked in Torno and I had I think it was like forty off. We got a... Uh, a Cartier Pasha 36 chronograph. Okay. Okay. That is a product of yeah. its time. Yeah. It yeah. was like 7,200 and we got it for like 40 something. Yeah. And I remember being so excited and so happy that I have a Cartier. So that was my per first personal. But then when I got into the industry, I ended up selling it and trading it for something else. Okay. <laughs> And were you interested in just how the watch looked aesthetically or were you also interested in the mechanical side of it? I didn't understand too much of the mechanical side, yeah. but it did have a see-through, a clear back. A it was a skeleton, back. it was a skeleton yeah. back. And I love the sapphires on the side. It was a, it was a pretty watch. Yeah, all right. It was pretty. To Greg's Pasha. All right, <laughs> We've moved on to Tiffany stamp dials. Yeah. <laughs> 
So this is the holy grail. I don't even yeah. have this thing wrapped still because I'm scared to even touch it. This is your grail. This is my grail. Fifty nine eighty. My favorite watch to wear. Yeah. That I haven't worn yet. Yeah. You haven't worn it. I haven't. Yet. The links are still in. Okay. Because I have one. I'm just. I'm. 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 I'm waiting to take this out. I okay. Don't know. I just don't know when's. What a good are you time. waiting for? I don't know. My wedding. Maybe the. Maybe the opening of the store. Okay. I don't know. One of those. It needs a moment. Okay. It needs a moment. Yeah. But this, I just won't touch. This is the fifty nine eighty Tiffany stamped edition. Why do you love this watch? It's so just. Much? It's just. It's just. Am I allowed to curse? You. It's unfuckwittable. Yeah. This one. That's it. It's just. Look okay. at it. <laughs> You feel like this is the man. This is class. Okay. But it, it's, it goes a, a, a level higher than that. So it's this Tiffany stamped, you know? Tiffany A stamped. lot of people have the 5980, but not stamped by Tiffany. Would you gem set this? No. Now tell me why. I just, you just don't. It's a rule. They know the rule. Tell me a little bit more about the rule because you're, you're down to gem set this. Because that's super, super limited. That's a watch you bust down at the time when they, before they became crazy and before the watch industry went nuts. Okay, so do you have certain criteria then for like watches that are acceptable to gem set? Or is it kind of just case by case scenario? It's just that that's a collectible. You don't ruin a collectible. Okay, interesting. You know? Yeah. No, I get But I'm sure there's people, I, I just, I don't know. I don't even know if it's been done before, honestly. <laughs> we ought to find out. Probably not. I don't even want to find out. Yeah, that one. probably not. Yeah. But I'm super interested in the fact that you also recognize some things shouldn't be gem set aftermarket. Oh, I get it. Okay. I get it. Mm -hmm. This is more like a, it's, it's, this is like an F you thing. Okay, we took a beautiful watch and we iced it out. It's like, all right, we all know it's ruined, but I like it. <laughs> I like it. It looks good. And I just think it's fascinating that you use the word ruined. Because it is. Yeah. And the in the in the actual like watch community, it's it's frowned upon. We all know that. We know that. Yeah. But if I know what it is, I know I'm okay with that. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not an idiot walking around like, oh, it's worth a million dollars. It's not. Right. Right? Okay. We are the dumbed down version of Swiss in 47th Street. But it's the <laughs> honest truth. It's like um, we we go that we do what we it's a chop shop. Right. It's one. There's very few people on that street that actually know what they're doing. Avi is one of them. So, there's very few people that can come out of there and say, "Okay, this is what we do. We do quality stuff." A, a guy like Jacob. Yeah. He started there with the. It was a chop shop. Right. Avi had. We all had chop shops. It's up to us to, you know, tighten up, make it sexy, and get it to the masses. You've got quite a variety of clients. Mm-hmm. Michael B. Jordan, Floyd Mayweather. Joey Badass is one of them. He's a okay. pretty good watch collector as well. Are we doing watches for these guys? I mean, yeah. 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 Plain. 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 Oh, plain. So we are doing. Yeah, plain. Michael V. Jordan is a big plain watch collector. So is um, Joey Badass. Yeah. I mean, I also feel like what's misunderstood by the watch community mm -hmm. is that a lot of these guys do you take it seriously, the collecting. Even Drake, Drake is yeah. a huge watch collector. Oh, he's People, huge. Yeah, he has a couple of, I style, even Little Yachty's a client of mine, right? Huge, we love Little huge watch collector, but he has those pieces that are holy grail pieces. Mm. A lot of them, you know, but a lot of them are iced out. And it's it's a fun, it's fun. Right, it's fun. We don't, we don't take, we know we don't take it seriously, but <laughs> it's a good time. Yeah. It's a good time. It is a good time. Are you a, a watch gifter? I have been before. Yeah. Yeah. I've given a watch to my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's I think that's something men should do. Give your lady a Rolex. Oh. Give your it, lady get a it Rolex. From me. <laughs> get it from Greg <laughs> Una. <laughs> or Avi. <laughs> what uh, or Avi? What what Rolex did you buy your girlfriend? At um a day just. Lady size? Lady size. No, no, no. 36. Okay, good. 36. Good. You've also collaborated with Kith, another New York story. Mm -hmm. Want to talk about that a little bit? So so the founder of Kith is Ronnie Feig, which is a very close friend of mine. We, we, we had him on recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Shout yeah. out to Ronnie. He just came out with that um, Tahoe collection, the F1. I was just out there with him, actually. Oh, yeah? It was incredible. Did you get one? Yeah. Good. What color? Green. Nice. Okay. Paris one. OK, cool. So back to your collaboration with Kith. Um, we ended up doing a collaboration on a New York theme, that is just the NY pendant, mm -hmm. a Yankee pendant. Yeah. And it ended up being a super hit. Got it. And it went from that to having a boutique, actually store within a store, 
on Lafayette Street here down the block. So you have a store within the Kith store yes. on Lafayette. Mm -hmm. And what are you selling in the Kith store? Jewelry. Just jewelry, like the pendants. The pendants, or it changes. chains, bracelets, necklaces. Yeah. No rings. watches. No watches. No watches. So watches is kind of what you keep. For it's a side. It's a side hustle. If someone wants to. How New York is that? It's honest. <laughs> it's a, you know, someone's like, "Hey, can you get me this?" It's a phone call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's very Forty Seventh Street. That's very Forty Seventh Street. Yeah. You had a little guest appearance, starring role, cameo, 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 appearance. cameo appearance on uh, the movie Uncut Gems. Right. I was just talking about this on another podcast, and it's just I, it's. It's still surreal growing up to Adam Sandler and, and, and you know, being in his presence for a little bit. Let him in, let him in, let him in. Sorry, man, he's with me. Yeah, that's my guy. What's up, sexy? How we doing? Hey, check this out. You see this Rolls Royce that I did? But you know what? I, I think that movie was, um, I think people got it wrong. I think people think that that's a life of a jeweler. It wasn't a life of a jeweler. It was actually a life of a chronic gambler. Right. <laughs> you know I mean? Like, that's not what it is down there. But the uh, suspense oh. from the moment I step into that street, that's how my day is. It's just like. Da, 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 da. Well, I thought they really conveyed that accurately, right? He, he did a great. I'm so upset that he didn't win. That anxiety. He did, in that did such movie? a good job. Yeah. He did such a good job. And like, I've watched it. We've, we've all grown up to Adam Sandler movies, right? We've seen him play the same character. You know, it's Adam. And just watching him switch to that, it was, it was really cool to watch. So you're kind of setting a little bit of a tone and vibe for your clients. Mm -hmm. Like it's a collaboration, but you're like bringing new things and ideas into the fold. What do you see in the next two years going on with jewelry design or like even custom watch setting? I think the technology for that just the technology that we have from when I first started in 09 to now is, it's night and day. So, I mean, and then plus with all this new stuff coming out, it's just, I don't think there'll be a limit to what we can do. You can literally create anything. Now you have all this AI stuff that's making things for you. You don't even need a designer anymore. Like, it's just happening. You could just submit a photo and they'll just make you a collection. The AI thing is... It's still, it's scary. So that's scary. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, but I just, I, I don't know what, I, I'm still trying to feel the direction of where it's going now. Yeah. So I'm kind of in this little space. Yeah. You're like in the, in the middle. In yeah. Between. I'm ready to go though. I'm ready to. You're ready to I'm go. I'm ready to go. You're, well, you're about to open a store. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so let's see. Yeah. I think it's going to be interesting though to watch. Okay. We don't know where anything is going right now. It's been, the world's on fire. Now, when you bust down a watch, are you going by the original spec? No. Okay. That's that's the point of doing it. Yeah. Right. So just do what you feel. You know, do what you want to do. Would you say that that's kind of the ethos behind the gem setting? It's like maybe making it a little less serious, but that's okay. Mm hmm Because we know all the iced out stuff is not serious. Who's gonna take you seriously walking in? But we're not, we're not, again, we're not here to have, you know, we're not here for a long time, we're here for a good time. <laughs> okay. You know? 